month is going to be paid into that repayment plan. Unfortunately, only, uh, only about 30% Chapter 13 plans are actually successful. That means 70% or more of the plans fail and people lose the benefit of the bankruptcy when they stop making those payments to the trustee. If you do stop making payments to the trustee, your case will be dismissed by the trustee. Okay, Chapter 7, liquidation of assets. The trustee downside obvious to this is the trustee can seize and sell any of your non-exempt assets. Again, this is only going to happen if there's actual equity in the asset. Um, it will not eliminate child support or taxes or student loans, and you cannot pay the arrearages on a house um, in, the chapter in a Chapter 7 as you can in a Chapter 13. So, but there are some pros to filing Chapter 7. It takes four to six months as, as opposed to a lengthy Chapter 13. Typically only requires one trip to the court. That's the three-for-one hearing we talked about earlier. And it is easier if you decide not to use an attorney. It's easier to file Chapter 7 Pro Se as opposed to a Chapter 13 plan. Downside to Chapter 7, obviously, is that you could lose property that's not exempt. It affects the ability to obtain future credit. Uh, typically, 13s may be looked at a, a little bit uh, better as, as opposed to a Chapter 7 by future creditors. Um, and you can only have the benefit of a Chapter 7 filing once every eight years. Now let's compare the effects between a Chapter 7 and a Chapter 13. We provide you a little chart there on page 17. Um, let's look at the example if you're behind on a car payment. In a Chapter 7, you're going to surrender or bring the car payments current. In a Chapter 13, you're going to be able to pay the arrearages in a repayment plan and keep the property. Let's talk about if there's a co-debtor involved. Uh, in a Chapter 7, a creditor can go after a co-debtor immediately. As opposed to a Chapter 13, they actually have to wait um, they cannot seek payment without the court's permission. Now, let's look, keep secured property by paying the creditor its value. In a Chapter 7, you might have to pay that in one lump sum. In a Chapter 13, you're going to be able to pay maybe with some interest, but you'll be able to pay it throughout the repayment plan. And finally, disposable income is sufficient to fund a Chapter 13 plan. Well, if you're in a ch Chapter 7, the court may determine that it was presumptively abusive to file a Chapter 7 when you could have afforded to be in a 13 and they may dismiss the case. Another question. Can you convert between one type of bankruptcy to another once you've filed? You can, and we see that quite often. If you're in a Chapter 7 um, and you're in a situation where, for instance, the mortgage company um, wants you to be in a Chapter 13 so that you can put your rearages in the, in the uh, repayment plan and then give you perhaps a loan modification, then you could convert to a 13 easily. Um, and the same is true on the other side. If you're in a 13, but you cannot afford to make your monthly payments, um, you will be allowed to convert to a Chapter 7. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break right now, and then we're going to come back and talk about reaffirmation agreements. Okay, now we're going to talk about reaffirmation agreements. A reaffirmation agreement is a contract between you and the creditor which basically takes the debt that you've listed in the bankruptcy and you remove it outside of the bankruptcy. We see it usually with cars in particular. Um, it is a contract where you're going to pay all or a portion of the amount owed, but you do get to keep the property. Um, it is voluntary, it is not required by law, but again, we always stress that a reaffirmation agreement removes the debt from the bankruptcy, so your personal liability will not be discharged and you don't get the benefit of the bankruptcy with respect to that debt. So we always recommend that you proceed cautiously and again we urge you to talk to counsel before you sign a reaffirmation agreement. Um, failure to re reaffirm a secured debt, it does leave you out uh, available to, for repossession on that asset. Be mindful though that a reaffirmation agreement must be approved either by your lawyer or be approved by a judge if you're filing pro se. Uh, and if the judge determines that he doesn't think that you can afford to keep that asset and pay that debt outside of the bankruptcy, he may not approve the reaffirmation agreement. So just be mindful of that. Even if you do file a sign of reaffirmation agreement, um, you'll be able to cancel it within um, 60 days after you've actually filed the reaffirmation agreement with the court or before your discharge order. So if you decide ultimately that you don't want to keep the, the uh, vehicle, let's say, um, you will be able to change your mind. It's not permanent, at least until those dates that I told you. Um, despite current payments, be mindful uh, that a creditor can and may still take your car back. So just be aware of that if there's no reaffirmation agreement. Um, and if you do later default on the reaffirmation ag uh, agreement, I cannot stress enough that you may have a deficiency suit resulting 
uh, for the repossession. What that means is if a creditor does take your car, sells it, but he doesn't yield enough money to pay off the debt, there's what's called a deficiency at the end of that, and you could be liable for that deficiency, and you will not have the benefit of a bankruptcy because you've already filed your bankruptcy and you're limited when you could refile, as I mentioned earlier. With a Chapter 7, uh, you'd only be able to refile another Chapter 7 after eight years. So just keep those things in mind. One of the other things that we like to, to stress, and I mentioned this early on as one of our key five points when we first sat down, was let's talk about alternatives to filing bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is not for everyone. You may be in circumstances where it's not required, so we just try to highlight those and at least make you aware of alternatives. Um, in instances where um, you're actually being threatened by a creditor that they're going to file a lawsuit, oftentimes the creditors just threaten it but don't follow through. So just be mindful that you may not need to file bankruptcy if they're just threatening it. Um, if they actually do file a lawsuit against you, um, typically you'll know because that you're being served with a summons and complaint. Now if that happens, come on down to our offices. We have walk-in hours Monday through Thursday from 9 to 4, and you, they'll, we'll actually assist you in filing your answer. You do have to file an answer within 20 days, so be mindful of that. Um, we do recommend that you file an answer if you have been sued uh, with a complaint. Uh, because we want to give you your day in court where you can tell your side of the story and also to verify the amount of the debt that the creditor is claiming that you owe. Uh, if a judgment is obtained uh, by the creditor, they may execute on that judgment. What that means is they might attach your savings or checking account or they might try and garnish your wages. So that oftentimes people do come to us and look for bankruptcy assistance if they are actually being um, executed upon on that judgment. But again, oftentimes the creditors only threaten the lawsuit and they don't actually go forward. Another alternative to filing bankruptcy is negotiate new terms. In today's economic situation, you might be able to pick up the phone and talk with your creditor and say, look, I'm having some financial problems. Would you be willing to take X amount or lower my interest rate to X amount? So give that a shot. Uh, consumer credit counseling. What I like about consumer credit counseling is that um, it's, it's all but a Chapter 13. It's an informal reorganization in my mind. They will help you uh, create a, a repayment plan uh, and help put you on a budget. So consider Consumer Credit Counseling Services here in Las Vegas uh, if you are thinking about giving that a shot before filing bankruptcy. Loan modification or refinancing your assets. Um, but the only thing with that is we, we, we really try and beware of scams um, associated with loan modifications. Just make sure that um, the company that's helping you is actually licensed. Um, and then, of course, Consumer Credit Counseling Services, again, they offer a free nonprofit program to assist with loan modifications, so you can pick up the phone and contact them, schedule an appointment, they might be able to help you. Judgment proof. Um, this is an alternative filing bankruptcy, and typically it uh, goes, uh, matters if your income is of the nature that is exempt, meaning a creditor cannot collect against you. Even if they obtain a judgment against you, the money is exempt, and the creditor cannot take that money. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, we do have a judgment-proof clinic that we offer twice a month, and let us know if you're interested in, in attending that clinic. And you might find out more information um, alternative to filing bankruptcy. And lastly, keep bad credit. A lot of people just live with bad credit. The debts typically will fall off your credit report after 7 to 10 years. So keep those in mind. Um, if you have a creditor that is calling you, uh, the creditor obviously is going to try and collect on the debt. However, oftentimes a creditor will s uh, send the debt out to a collection agency. Uh, there's a Fair Debt, Cre Fair Debt Collection Practices Act that may apply and we want you to be mindful of it. It applies to those third party collection agencies. You can uh, do a written request to the collection agency to stop communications with you and the collection efforts. Um, you can also submit a written request to that collection agency requesting that they verify the debt and or that you're disputing the debt. And we will give you some assistance with that in our Judgment Proof Clinic if you decide you'd like more information on that. Also, you can go to our website. Um, also, be mindful, a collector, um, collection agency in particular, they cannot call you outside, um, or, or excuse me, they cannot call you from the hours of 9 p.m. at night to 8 a.m. the next morning. So if they're calling you during those times, um, you need to let us know. Maybe we can uh, point you in some direction for some legal assistance. Um, also, they cannot make false statements. They cannot make statements that are going to be misleading to you. They cannot talk to others about your 